Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to rank the telescope logos. Now as some of you may know, I was in corporate sales and marketing for a good 25 years or so, so I may notice certain things here that the average person might not, and I thought you might be interested to hear my perspective on this topic. So you know, back when I was working, I had somebody in marketing say to me once, marketing doesn't matter until it does. And what he meant by that is, in a perfect world, the best product would always rise to the top, the best value would always be perceived by the general public, and it would rise to the top as well. But as we know in the real world, that doesn't always happen. And in a case, especially today, where we have a lot of product consolidations and you have brands that have products and services that are, you know, roughly equal, it can be the little thing, the way the product looks and feels, can affect the public's purchasing decision. Okay, so a logo that is commonly taken to be very successful by marketing people is the one for FedEx. The company used to be known as Federal Express, but everybody was just calling it FedEx anyway. They listened to their customers and shortened the name. That's good marketing as well. Look at the logo, it's orange and blue. Orange and blue are complementary colors in the spectrum. Nothing is more different from orange than blue and vice versa. Those colors are chosen deliberately and you are meant to notice that. Also buried on the right side of that logo is an arrow pointing to the right indicating motion. So a lot of things working there. It's simple, it's delivering the message and it looks good. Do any telescope logos match what FedEx has done? Let's find out. So at number 10, you know, I've enjoyed and owned many of their products, but come on, Orion, you gotta change that logo. They've had that thing since the 1980s. I remember that logo being on the newsprint catalog that they used to mail out to us. And longevity in logos can be a good thing, but that thing is just looking terribly dated. It's an Orion word with that oval sort of vanishing perspective thing. It looks like somebody went to a shopping mall in the 1980s and got his inspiration from a Tron machine at the arcade. Probably also drew that on a very primitive computer. Sometimes that logo is to the side of the word, sometimes it's underneath, and I get it, it's an O, but it's squashed, so you're seeing the O in Orion twice. You know, Orion's been going through a lot of changes lately, much publicized in our industry. Could be time for a refresh to change that logo and let everybody know that it's a new company. Could take that opportunity. Okay, so at number nine, high-end company, Lunt Solar Systems. <laughs> Lunt makes solar telescopes. They've had a couple of logos. I don't think either of these work all that well. The first one they had looks like sort of a fire engine racing down the street. That doesn't really convey what it feels like to look through a solar telescope. They came out with a new logo that they're using right now, and it's better, I think. I get what they're going for. The company is based in Arizona. You've got the setting sun there and an outline of a cactus. I don't think all those elements are really working together. The cactus is a little bit too bold. It looks like it's giving me the finger. You know, I would wonder what would happen if they just got rid of the cactus altogether. And I think the logo might work better without it entirely. So at number eight, you know, Celestron, <laughs> you're doing a great job with your products, but you've always struggled with marketing. They've always struggled to find some sort of brand identity. At the same time, Mead on the other side of the aisle was doing great at this. Who can forget the advertising wars in the 1980s? Mead taking an approach, I mean, their catalogs look more like somebody's thesis than anybody else. Color was all the rage back in the 70s and 80s in advertising, but Mead chose to make many of their ads in black and white. So you showing guys, nerdy guys in glasses and lab coats, looking at their telescopes. And Celestron, well, let's just say they took a more traditional approach to marketing. So they've come up with the word Celestron. It's slanted towards the right. It's usually in orange. Recently, they've added that circular orb with the C cut into it. It's okay, I guess. I think the problem I have with it is when I look at that logo and I notice the orb with the C, I have a tendency to want to pronounce the C. So when I look at the ad, I tend to say C Celestron. So here I'm gonna go ahead and lump that in with a bunch of other logos that don't really strike me one way or the other. And by the way, this is fine. Anti-marketing, that is the refusal to do marketing, is a perfectly legitimate form of marketing. You're just gonna get it done in other ways. And the, the epitome of this is 
any Russian telescope. Tal, Sovietsky, Intez, I've had some of those telescopes in here where there's no logo at all on the scope. And I've even had a couple of Russian telescopes here that had no markings at all. You don't even know what it is. So I'll make a couple of quick comments here on these others. I've always thought that word ioptron is a little bit hard to pronounce. You can do that to draw attention to yourself, but you're walking a fine line between making something that's unique and something that people are just kind of not want to pronounce. So the word teleview there, I liked it when they just had the word teleview. Lately, they put that stylized T in there with the star burst coming off the side, and sometimes they'll put a word underneath it. I liked it best when it was just the word teleview. You didn't have to say anything else. You knew what it was. I will say this on behalf of Al Nagler, once I, I was talking to him once, he said one of his pet peeves is that people don't spell teleview correctly. So here's a PSA, look at the word, look at the last three letters, that's how you spell teleview, not the other way. Stellar View has a similar problem. So next up we have Explore Scientific. I like this logo, I like the font. It's broken up just about two thirds of the way through, which is about where you want to see something visually happen. And the O is a stylized oval there. The only thing I might be concerned about with that logo is that O is orange or yellow. Is that the sun? I don't really know what they're implying here. Do they want us to point their telescopes at the sun? <laughs> I mean, from a graphic art standpoint, I think that logo works very well. Just a little bit concerned about the message they might be sending to their customers. So next up, we have Skywatcher. Skywatcher is a good logo. It's a good name. I like the word. It just sort of rolls off the tongue. I like the galaxy stylized the graphic up on the side there. I like the font that says be amazed. This logo just plain works except for one thing, grammar. You know, I, when I wrote the telescope reviews, I always had an editor who had to correct me. Every time I wrote the word Skywatcher, I would write it wrong. And look at your own correspondence. If you've ever had to write the word Skywatcher email to your friend in reference to one of their telescopes, there's a chance you got it wrong too. So look at this. It's a capital S, a capital W, and a hyphen in between. It's actually two words. And I think that's a little bit too complicated. I think if Skywatcher wanted to refresh that logo, I might suggest they just run it into one word and have one capital letter. Otherwise, very good logo. So at number five, we have astrophysics. This is good work here. There's a couple of reasons why this works. Number one, in most of their recent models, the word astrophysics doesn't even appear on the dew shield. It's usually just the model number or the model name. Now the word astrophysics does usually appear on the visual back or on the focuser or on the diagonal, but that's usually not the first place you look. Your eye is naturally drawn to the dew shield, and the fact that the company name isn't even on there says something. It says, yeah, we know what this is. We don't have to say what it is. We all know. Second reason this logo works is subtle. You may not consciously notice this, but it'll affect you at a subconscious level. Level. Look at the color scheme that's used. It's red, white, and blue. A very subtle reminder to you that this product is made in USA. So at number four, we have Takahashi. Now, if you look at Takahashi's products, they don't have one specific logo or font that they use all of the time. They kind of mix it up a little bit, but you know what? I like them all. Whoever's picking these fonts, who's ever writing these things out, they're doing a very good job. It's written in such a way that it implies both seriousness and fun at the same time. Again, very indicative of the Japanese culture. There's a little bit of whimsy in a lot of Japanese products. I like the stylized T and S in the triangle, and I also very much like how sometimes they don't even bother to translate the Japanese on the nameplate on the visual back. You know what they're saying? Yeah, we built a good telescope. We don't have to translate that for you. So at number three, here's a case where something could have gone terribly wrong, but it didn't. You know, William Optics and that swan, it's just a little bit offbeat. What does a swan have to do with astronomy? Sure, Cygnus is a swan, but if you look at the logo, I don't think they're going for Cygnus here. Somebody just liked the word swan, the idea of a swan, and it, I can't explain it, it just looks fantastic. 
So William Optics has always been very good at naming their products. Look at the new Red Cat, and they put a little stylized Red Cat on the dust cover. And if you stop and think about it, what is a Red Cat? Are there red cats? <laughs> Let me tell you why this logo works, because mentally erase the red cat from the dust cover and you'll see a lot of the personality in that product goes away. That's a sign of good marketing. Okay, so at number two, it's the masters of marketing themselves, Mead. So this logo is great and it's great for a number of reasons that defy conventional wisdom. One thing marketing people will tell you is don't have a complicated logo. And that thing's pretty complicated. I mean, it looks like a scientific thing and it looks kind of like a star, but the more you stare at it, it's four M's joined together. It's a logo that just plain works. And it also works because Mead, like astrophysics, very often doesn't put the name of the company anywhere near the logo. You're just supposed to know. I had a friend say to me once, Mead is a highly skilled marketing firm that just happens to make telescopes on the side. You know, when I read some of those old catalogs from the 1980s, I just want that stuff all over again. And it's products that I know that I don't like. You know, 4-inch Schmidt-Cassegrain, ETX, ED series, refractors from the 1990s. I know I don't like those things, but when I read the ads, it makes me want to buy them all over again. So finally, at number one, you know, there really wasn't any debate for me on this one. It's Questar. So iconic, that red circle with the simple word in the middle of it. It just looks so good. You can't mistake it for anything else. They put it on the side of the fork arm. The red color contrasts beautifully with the purple on the tube. They also put the same thing on the dust cap. That logo is timeless. It looked good 50 years ago. It'll look good 50 years from now. All right, folks, that's a rundown of my favorite telescope logos. What do you think? And I'm especially interested in your comments. Were you ever influenced by marketing? That in other words, you knew it was working on you and you knew it was manipulating you, but you went ahead and you fell for it anyway. Let us know in the comments below. Till then, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.